the Lord. So nice to see you once again. Well, friends, this is my fifth volume on worship. And I want to explain to you today about heaven. In heaven, there is only worship. And God had made three archangels. One was Lucifer. He was a worshipper. And he had a row of angels. And the second one was Gabriel. And he was a messenger. And he had a team of angels with him. And third was Angel Michael, who was a warrior. And he also had a team of angels with him. Now, Lucifer was a very beautiful angel. The Bible says he was very close to God. And his duty along with his team of angels was to worship God. And he was leading the worship. So he knows exactly what worship is all about. But one day, this Lucifer, he began to get pride and he said, why not I become God? And the day pride was conceived in his heart and he thought of becoming God, that was the day God threw him and his team of angels along with him. My dear friends, God never made Satan. Lucifer was a praise and worship angel. But he decided, he conceived pride and now he wanted to become God. So God had to throw him and his team out of heaven. And they were thrown on planet earth. Now you may say, oh, why did God not forgive him? But let me give you an example. If I come to your house, I sit down for a while and you give me a nice treat, you give me some tea or coffee and, and after some time, after half an hour, I'll say, okay, all of you now pack up and leave the house. This house belongs to me. You think you'll leave me? As long as I was sitting as a friend, you welcome me. But the minute I thought covetously of taking over your house and sending you out, that's when you decide to throw me out. Now you'll call the police and get me out. So my dear friends, that's exactly what happened with Lucifer. He was a worshipper. He was very close to God, so he said, why don't I become God? So God threw him out and is one third. And that is what we call Satan. Lucifer, a fallen angel now. You know, when Jesus sends his 12 apostles, he anoints them and sends them out to do miracles. So they go and perform many miracles and they cast out demons. And then when they come back in the evening to give the report <clears throat> to Jesus, this is what they say. They say, Lord, even demons submitted to us. And Jesus is telling them, rejoice not because demons submitted to you. But rejoice because your names are written in the Lamb Book of Life. And then Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. You know what Jesus was talking about? He was talking about the day Lucifer sinned and God threw him and his one third out of heaven. Jesus is pertaining to that and he's telling his apostles do not rejoice because demons submitted to you. 
but rejoice because your names are written in the Lamb Book of Life. You know, worship is something so beautiful that even Satan had coveted it. He wanted to be worshipped. So in heaven, Lucifer's itinerary was he wanted to become God. But he was thrown out along with his team of angels on planet Earth. So if his itinerary in heaven was to become God, when he is on Earth, what will he want to be? God. And that's why he comes in the form of God. To fool us. So my dear friends, there is only one God. The Creator who made you and who made me. And the Bible says, He made us in His image and His likeness. And we are only supposed to worship that God, that one God who is our maker. He made us like Him. He didn't make us like an animal. He didn't make us like a bird. He didn't make us like a reptile, so neither does he look like an animal or a bird or a reptile. He's God. He's God. He's our Father in heaven. He made us so beautiful in his own image and in his own likeness. That's why, what is the proof that every one of us who are created are created by that one holy God? What is the proof? You look at everybody around the planet Earth, every man and woman or child, everyone has two eyes, two ears, one nose, only one mouth, exactly 32 teeth, two hands, ten fingers, two legs, ten toes, heart, lung, liver, all the internal parts, same. This all goes to prove that one God has designed us. And the Bible gives us a record of how he made us. There is no other book in this world that tells us how God made man. Except the Bible. We know of Darwin's theory. Darwin says, that man has come from a heap. Nonsense. Maybe Dalswin's family was a heap. Not us. The Bible says God made us. Today, even science proves that Darwin's theory is wrong. When they discovered DNA, then they came to know there is no match of an animal and a human being's DNA. Come on. If you are learning, then understand the simple truth that we are not come out from apes. You know, there is a beautiful song I would like to sing. He was called Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin. So we call him Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. So there's a song. About 60 billion years ago A little fish changed to a tadpole Sprouted legs and grew some hands Then it crawled out on the land Changed from a reptile to a monkey Then a man So today I took the Bible to my school But the teacher said that was against the Said my grandpa's a gorilla, my dad's a chimpanzee, and my little baby brother's a baboon. Did Charlie make the monkey out of you? Do you think you should be living in a zoo? Don't you know that it's a lie? When it comes your turn to die, you'll find out you're not a monkey but a fool. 
Well, I've heard some far-fetched stories in my day, but the one I heard this morning takes the cake. Well, I'm looking in the mirror, just checking out my rear, but I can't find a tail growing any place. Did Charlie make a monkey out of you? Do you think you should be living in a zoo? Don't you know that it's a lie? When it comes your turn to die, you'll find out you're not a monkey but a fool. So I stood up to the teacher and told the class. I can't swallow this baloney about our past. Evolution really stinks. There's too many missing links to believe. All this is just too much to ask. Did Charlie make a monkey out of you? Do you think you should be living in a zoo? Don't you know that it's a lie? When it comes, your turn to die. Well, friends, we are not come out from monkeys. We are not come out from apes. God made us. He is the one who made the monkey. He is the one who made the ape. He is the one who made all the animals, the birds, the reptiles. So why can't he make man? Why does he need a monkey to change it from man? If you're wise. Let your wisdom speak to you tonight, my dear friends. So now, only God is to be worshipped because He is the owner. He owns everything. Everything is in His hands. He is the Creator. We don't worship creation, even Lucifer. Is a creation. We worship the Creator. We worship God. So, my dear friends, let us understand today that we need to worship God in the beauty of holiness. God wants worship. Why? Because He is supreme. And he dwells in the midst of praises. The Bible says, "God inhabits praises." In your situation, in your problem, when you start worshiping God, He comes down. Worship is another way of saying, "God, come down." He comes down. And when he comes down, he is the light of the world. He is the power. He is the creator. He comes and changes everything. Everything. My dear friends, our mouth is made to worship God and Him alone. Nothing else. I remember a war which was fought by Joshua. And Moses got a leading to go on the mountain. And when he went on the mountain, even Aaron and Aaron's son Ur, they went along with Moses on the mountain. And Moses lifted up his hands unto God in worship. And as Moses' hands were up, Joshua was winning the war. Moses and Aaron and Ur were seeing that Joshua is winning the war. The minute Moses would get tired and put his hand down, they saw that the enemy was advancing. Again, Moses put his hands up. Again, they found that Israel was winning now. Joshua was winning the war. When they understood that the war and the battle was not fought with swords, but by worship, then Aaron and Ur bought a stone. And kept it down and made Moses sit on the stone. And one side, Aaron kept Moses' hands up, and the other side, Ur kept Moses' hands up till they won the war. My dear friends, the battle belongs to the Lord. 
The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to God. One option is given to us. To get God into your battle, just lift up all your hands. Start worshipping Him. Start praising Him. Start thanking Him. And you will see miracles. God comes down. When He comes down, He changes everything. The Bible says, the anointing breaks the yoke of the devil. The anointing breaks the yoke of the devil. When God comes down, His presence is heaven. When He comes down, earth becomes heaven. Because wherever God is, His presence changes everything. So my dear friends, in your situation, in your problems, stop grumbling. The devil wants you to mock God. The devil wants you to tease God. The devil wants you to separate from God by seeing your situation. Don't do it. Don't be fooled. That is the time you have to really worship God. That's the time you need to lift your hands up and say, God, you are supreme. Not the problem. The problem is not supreme. The problem is not big. God, you are big. You know, when my son was attacked with cancer, I will give his testimony to you very soon. When my son was attacked with cancer, I was in indoor having a crusade. And when my wife got the news from the doctors that he's attacked with lymph node cancer, my wife phoned and told me it was in the afternoon and I had to take a big evening meeting in the evening in indoor on the open ground and in the afternoon I'm hearing this news for some time I was sad I was sitting and praying I was sitting and praying trying to understand what's this I told one of my brother who was with me his name is Sham Sundar. I told him, Sham, today I am not taking the meeting. You need to take the meeting. And he said, Brother, everybody's come for you. You need to do it. And I told him the entire case. And he was also very sad. And I was so sure I'm not taking the meeting today. The vehicle is supposed to come at 6.30 to pick me up to take me to the ground and let me tell you till 6.20 I had not dressed up yet I was just sitting and I heard God's voice I was praying and God told me Octavio now who is your God? who is big for you now? the problem is big Oh, I am big. That sickness is your God or I am your God. You know, within a second, I came to my senses and I said, yes, God, you are God. The sickness is not God. The situation is not God. You are God. And believe me, friends, within the next 10 minutes, I dressed up and I was ready for the healing meeting. I was ready. In fact, I was before the car came. And when I came on that ground, the first people, you know, generally I preach and then I start the healing. This day, I started the healing first. I said, how many cancer patients are here? Please come up. And there were a group of cancer people who were there. And I tell you, I rebuked cancer in the name of Jesus. And we started worshiping and they got healed. Next thing I did was cast out demons. Wow, we started worshipping. It was the most wonderful meeting I ever had. The presence of God came down. It changed everything. Our God is God. He never fails. He is the boss. He, has, he deserves the glory. 
When we worship Him in our problem, He will come down. Don't worship your problems. Worship God. He will change everything. God bless you. See you next week.